Welcome to another edition of Tattooed Athlete. In this episode, I had the amazing opportunity of being joined by Kate Gordon. Kate has competed at the CrossFit Games twice on a team in 2015 and 2019. She's also a coach and a member of the CrossFit seminar staff. Kate and I talk fitness, and then we take a look at her incredible tattoos and the stories behind them, and then we get some information on Kate's upcoming tattoos that you're not going to want to miss. Thanks for watching. Hello, Tattooed Athletic Club, and welcome to another edition of Tattooed Athlete. I am over the moon excited today to be joined by Kate Gordon. Kate, how's it going? So good. So good. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, like you and I were chatting about, this is super fun with me being in Salt Lake City and you're in Australia. We got to do a little fun, um, which time is it um, for, <laughs> for each of us, which was fun. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So before we get into your tattoos, I know you're a two-time CrossFit Games athlete, um, but why don't you tell me a little bit about your, your journey that kind of got you to that point? Yeah. So um, I really don't have a super interesting like sport background. I wasn't a particularly skilled athlete at any kind of sport. I was a dancer through school. Um, I did, I mean, I was an active kid. Like I did a little bit of everything as a kid growing up. Uh, but I was just your regular gym goer from finishing high school through to when I found CrossFit. Um, and I, I kind of got into CrossFit the roundabout way because I had been rehabbing a an ACL reconstruction. And through that, I just got into training more and more and eventually walked into a CrossFit gym and signed up for a month and was like, ah, you know what? I don't think this is for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I got totally sucked in. The trainers there were so nice and the community was just it was the first time that I'd been to a gym where they remember my name. And like, I'd been going to, you know, the same gym for years and no one knew who I was. And I was like, this is my second session. And you guys know my name. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. Right. <laughs> so I was totally sucked in by the community and the friendly people. And it probably took about three months before I was a full convert. Like I was, <laughs> I was fully You're... like in, in, into the cult. Yeah. Um, and then it's just, yeah, it's just snowballed from there. So I was always strong. Like I always had um, a, a underlying strength. I always had a good upper body strength. So that was, I kind of had that foundation probably before I even started CrossFit with just my build. Um, so yeah, genetics probably has a big part to play for me. <laughs> and then and then I just really loved it. And I just went all in with training and um, I kind of found myself in gyms that had, you know, a group of people that were generally fairly competitive. So what would just always jump in was always just keen and enthusiastic. And that kind of led me down the track of competing, um, which eventually led me to competing at the games twice. So yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, you could never plan. Right. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's, what's super cool. And that's what I hear a lot of stories is, you know, I was kind of good at this sport and I did a little bit of that. And then I ended up in a CrossFit gym and it's like, mm. you know, it, it was ever a very similar story to so just got super hooked love the community. I think first and foremost is what um, the majority of CrossFitters I've talked to say, including myself. And, um, and then, you know, that, that competitiveness kind of peaks and, yeah, um, and then obviously that took you to the games, which is awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people that find CrossFit when they're a little bit older, like I was in my early twenties when I found it. And I think I was finally almost just emotionally mature enough to feel like I wanted to commit and be good at something prior to that when I was younger it was like I didn't really care I didn't really think about it I didn't you know like that just wasn't a concept to me like competing and being really good and, and making it you know almost your life's work but when I was a little bit older and got into CrossFit I was like hey I understand and I can see that there's this process where you put in time and effort and you get results from it and I'm I'm ready to do that like I it was it became you know I became more goal oriented I think as I got older Right, right. Absolutely. Well, that's super awesome. So, so you got plans to get back to the games, you think? I mean, who knows? It's been such a weird year and it has really thrown me in terms of competing because there's just been no real com competition season. Um, so my last competition was in March, which was a sanctioned event in uh, the Gold Coast in Australia. And then our second sanctioned event in Australia was canceled, but they bumped everyone that was already qualified to compete into the 2021 event. So I, I guess I'm competing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're um, in now. You might as well. Yeah, I'm in. Like, it's definitely been, I think, 
it's probably been tough to just stay on, you know, stay on track with training. It's, it's definitely taking a little bit of a backseat this year, which I'm kind of okay with. It's all right. I'm not too stressed about it. I have been keeping fit and healthy um, and just kind of chilling out a little bit more and being more relaxed, which, you know what, in the long term of my overall uh, journey and, and um, CrossFit career, it's probably not a bad thing if I have 12 months of like taking it easy. My body's probably going to be really grateful for it in about 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, anytime I've had that same kind of thought, I was like, man, I'm kind of sick of this. I'm ready to get back to normal. It's like, you know, maybe it's okay that I'm home as much as I am. And I should really just kind of start, you know, being okay with it and start enjoying yeah. it before I got to get back to it. I mean, how often are we, you know, basically under house arrest and forced right. to rest? Like it doesn't, <laughs> If it, if I want, I can tell you right now, I would be training as much as normal every single day, which I have been doing for the past five years, you know, like mm -hmm. training competitively. And I would have never had a break. And I think in another, maybe, you know, like come the next two or three years, I think my progress will be better served by the fact that I have had this downtime than if I were to just keep plowing through. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, that's super cool. But fingers crossed, we get back to some, some sanctioned events and some CrossFit events <laughs> sooner rather than later. <laughs> Well, well, hey, um, like the reason I reached out to you, reached out to you is you've got an incredible social media platform that really um, is super body positive, which I love. Um, and you've got some incredible tattoos that I would love to hear. <laughs> um, so why don't you um, tell me about your first tattoo and kind of the story behind that one? So uh, when I was, I think I was 16 or 17, um, my dad got his first tattoo. And so my dad at the time would have been, I don't know, early, like 50, 51. So I, you know, I'm going to just put this lightly. He probably went through a little bit of a midlife crisis <laughs> <laughs> and decided to go and get a tattoo. Um, and so he had a fern that was designed by an artist, a uh, very like New Zealand style tattoo um, done on his back. And so a an incredible tattoo artist in New Zealand did it. And so I went to that same artist and because I had my dad's permission, because he had a tattoo, of course, right. considering I was underage, I went and got a tattoo with my best friend from the same artist. Um, and it's just a star. So it's just an outline of a star just on the inside of my foot. And me and my best friend got exactly the same tattoo. And um, one, I just liked, I just liked it. Like there wasn't, <laughs> you know, a whole lot of really deep meaning. I think what was sure. more significant is that it was the same guy that did my dad's first first tattoo um but it also had a small connection to the school that I went to so the the I want to say like motto of our school was um the latin verb to serve uh, ut serviamis and so for me like the the concept of serving has always been a pretty strong theme in my life so there's a little connection there Right, right. Absolutely. So you said you were 16 or 17 when you got that? Yeah, I think I was 17. Yeah, just and, just underage. I'll take yeah. it. I'll, yeah, I was I was that cool kid. Underage. <laughs> right, right. A little bit rebellious. Such a rebel. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. And how much how much digging did you have to do to get him to let you do that? Oh, none. Because he ha he got it. He, it was like, <laughs> Um, it was perfect. It was the perfect opportunity. I'm like, you know, if, if your dad goes and gets a tattoo, it's like, oh, cool. That's, that's, I mean, it's like unwritten permission. It's like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> right. Right. And at that point, he probably figures you're going to do it anyway. So you might as yeah. well be involved in that process. Yeah. I do remember telling my mom and my mom being like, not so sure about it. And then she was the one that was like, look, just make sure it's something that you really like. And it means a lot to you because it's there forever. And I had this moment when I got home after getting it, looking down and being like, having a small, you know, like aneurysm of like, oh God, it's there forever. <laughs> like, oh my God. Right, right. Just having this like flush of like guilt and being like, oh my God, what have I done? And then it was fine. And then I was like, yeah. okay. And I was like, well, mom, you're going to have to deal with it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now it's just there and it's a, it's a good now reminder it's for forever. <laughs> right. Forever. Absolutely. So what followed that? What came after that one? Um, so I was living in LA. I was back and forth from LA. I, I went over to UC Irvine in Orange County for oh, cool. university. And then I kind of stayed there and moved up to LA eventually. And that was where I started coaching CrossFit as well. Um, and through those years, I would do a little bit of partying. Um, cool. And I actually... I always wanted to get tattoos in, in different places that I'd been to. Um, but I had a couple friends and we were just out and I, we were listening to... Um, 
we were listening to the Beatles and uh, there, it was the Lucy in the Sky with Diamond song. And I'd seen a couple of artists that had diamond tattoos. And I was like, I, I love that. Like I love the, the diamond and the Lucy in the Sky with Diamond song was just significant to me. So I actually got a diamond on my rib cage as my second tattoo. It was the last day that I was in Orange County before I had to move back to New Zealand. Like my, my oh, wow. student visa has had expired. And at that point I had no plans to come back, which I mean, I eventually did, but literally I think it was the day that I flew out the morning of my flight. Oh, so wow. I went and got a tattoo, just walked into like Newport <laughs> Beach tattoo and got a tattoo and then was like, okay, bye America. <laughs> J- jumping on a plane. I'm out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I have a, I have a diamond on my side and then what I actually eventually did is I've got two more. So I have a total of three. So I have one that's myself, one that's my brother, and then another that's my stepbrother. So oh, that's, that's awesome. kind of for that now. Right, right. Yeah, that, that family tie is super cool. Um, yeah. And a pretty popular theme of, of the tattoos connecting to a family in some way, not necessarily like everybody's names, right? But but something that's a that's a cool symbol. Yeah, it's just a symbol, right? Like and I think right. that's what, what tattoos are so so much about. It's it's a symbol. It's something that's significant to you. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be so literal. Like I think mm-hmm. that, you know, names or images like people feel like to make it significant it has to have obvious meaning, but I don't think it does. It can be quite obscure. Right, right. Absolutely, which is cool, right? Like how many people other than me now and your family really know that those diamonds symbolize family, which is really yeah, awesome. And you know what? They're probably going to listen to this and be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That diamond's for me. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. See, and you still love them. See, Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what came after those? I continue to go and expand out on my rib cage. So I did, I, I have a, a morphed skull and um, I have a big W. So W was my dad's nickname. So it's just a W, it's in behind the diamonds. And then I have a skull that's been warped a little bit. And the skull doesn't have any significant meaning except for I just really appreciated the, the, um, the artist. He was just a um, illustrator that I, I just loved his work. So yeah. I, I wanted to create, and I'm still in, in the workings of creating it, but a little bit of like almost a collage of just images that are kind of like juxtaposed in together that don't necessarily connect, that don't necessarily make sense. But just for me, I like this combination of things that I, I like that are quirky and interesting and have stories. So I have a massive bold W, the three diamonds and a little arch, and then I have this skull that's kind of warped in behind them. Right. That's very cool. But it's actually super unique because um, what I love about what you're saying is you found an artist um, that was able to do really a piece of art on you that is more mean, almost more meaningful than like, hey, this is what I want. Please do this. It was almost like, hey, you're just so incredibly talented. I want you to put something on me um, because you're so good at what you do, which is really fun. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So what do you think um, you're going to continue to do with that piece? So I actually, um, I love seeing more realistic black tattoos of like faces, especially eyes. Um, And so I, like my degree is in film and I've always loved film and um, a particular like element of film or like film history is film noir. I love film noir and I I remember studying it and the um, character of the femme fatale is is a really cool character. So there's a couple of um, actresses that I love from that time and they have incredible, you know, all the films are black and white and they have incredible lighting and and and, and the, the images of their eyes were always very significant because the femme fatales were quite literally um, women who were murderers. So <laughs> there's some really cool images of these actresses that they're just dangerous like they just have this look that could kill um so I've been looking around for ideas and artists that can kind of bring this concept to life and I've actually just recently found an incredible artist who's in Melbourne um which once we are allowed to tattoo again I will be getting him to do some eyes as almost like almost like a cutout of like half of their face so it's quite a realistic image compared to the very two two-dimensional images that I currently have so again just layering on different textures and different things to kind of what's happening oh that'll be awesome that'll be super cool and have any of your tattoos been done by the same artist are they all different people yeah so I have um 
a couple of the random ones which have been done just randomly by random people that I've literally just walked in. So they're the smaller ones. Then the majority of my tattoos have been done by one particular artist in Brisbane um, who did the, the skull and the diamonds and then also my flowers. Uh, and then now that I've just found this artist in Melbourne, he's going to do my next really big piece uh, in, in about two weeks, actually, when, when they're allowed to open up again. And then I'm probably going to have him do the eyes and do the extra stuff. So I think like, you know, as you tend to do, once you've found the artist that you love and you've got a good connection with and you settle on them for the next however many years, I'm probably going to be mm -hmm. going back and forth to him. Yep, that's a, that's a huge piece. I think that connection um, usually makes the process go a lot better and, and you know, just uh, creates more of an attachment to it. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned flowers. Um, that's that's definitely a, a great piece that is super noticeable, um, yeah. you know, on your social media. So tell me about that. So uh, again, this was one where I, I had a piece that I'd seen. Um, I'd, I, it was actually from another artist in the UK. And I was like, I am so in love with this, just the big flower thing. Um, and I've always loved uh, art, not, not just uh, tattoo art, but art of really big flowers. Like I'm really into flower photography, um, especially unusual flowers. And I'd seen this artist's rendition, I guess, of a chrysanthemum, which chrysanthemums are pretty popular in art, but they're very much, I, I think they're attached to a very, um, I, I want to say Japanese style, like you tend to see them intertwined with Japanese style tattoos. Um, so you get that kind of almost like cartoony, rounded, like edges type feel. Right. And what this one is, is a more realistic version of the flowers. So like cool. you can kind of see it here, where yep. it's like really big petals, there's some really dark shading on the inside, yeah, and then there's very, very cool. fine lines on the petals where it's almost like, it's almost like you can see the veins of the petals, like that's how detailed it is. So yep. I love that 3D effect and I love that depth and, and, the, and the, the magnified version of the flower. So it was just an image that I fell in love with. Um, and, and that's kind of true of most of my tattoos where sometimes the meaning has actually come after I've decided what I want to get. Um, it hasn't necessarily been, I have to have meaning for this tattoo. It's been, I have to love the image. Like I have to right. love the aesthetic. So I fell in love with the flower. Um, I had it done on the inside of the elbow that was painful um and then and then i had the second one done which is on the front of my shoulder and this one comes through like over my collarbone right. um so again the collarbone was probably really painful <laughs> and then the, the one that i'm getting from this new tattoo artist i'm an idiot because it's in my armpit so it's like oh the, boy the, head of the flower is like in my armpit with petals coming down um so i i already regret it but it's gonna be great with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're pretty committed to it at this point. I mean, I'm already on the line. <laughs> yep, yep, you're all, it, and it's funny, like, the amount of times that I've heard pit of my elbow is, like, I, I never really wrapped my head around, like, how difficult of a spot that would be till I started touching them, and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know that that would be great, because I've done, you know, above that, mm -hmm. and to here, so I've avoided those two spots that you're talking about <laughs> you're already. like, we're just gonna, and, I'm going to finish the tattoo right yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah well and exactly because I had plans to finish my sleeve but now I'm like oh my god I don't know that I want to do it everybody keeps talking about how bad it is funnily enough the, <laughs> the very middle of the elbow pit was it was bearable because it was very dark shading so it was a thicker needle um what was really painful was the petals just above so it's almost like the base of my bicep where it attaches like somewhere in there like bicep tendon and the fine lines with those fine needles feels like someone has a safety pin and they're just dragging it over your skin oh, boy it's just like, wow that oh my god that was unexpected <laughs> so, yeah, that spot right right above and then the collarbone when he did my collarbone like right in there thank god i didn't have too much you know coming in yeah i remember like muscles like something in my rotator cuff was like twitching every time <laughs> you do a section right right just like triggering whatever sense yeah it was. my arm's right. like huh, huh, every yeah time. exactly and how many sittings was was all of that would you say it was one so i did oh, wow. one for the elbow and one for this and i think okay. the reason that it was so quick is it was only like four hours it didn't take very long i think the reason it was so quick is that it's it's all black like i don't have any color on any of my mm -hmm. tattoos um and it was it's not 
it's it looks quite complex to look at but there's only really three different lines so you have the outline you have the black and then you have the fine lines of the veins of the petals so it's like there's really only three elements to the tattoo so it's just a matter of like going through all the black and then they do or all the outline all the black and then all the fine lines so there's not a lot right. of back and forth there's not a lot of switching i think it's fairly straightforward to actually apply i guess yeah well i'm excited to see that tattoo and i'm more excited to hear about your experience getting it yeah yeah so um so you mentioned that you may have some other small tattoos you want to touch on those at all yeah so i have a couple on my fingers so i have uh la because i was living in la oh, yeah. and then i have queensland because i was living in queensland in australia cool. and then i'm going to get melbourne so i'm going to get a oh, gothic cool. style m uh and then somewhere you know maybe on the edge of my pinky or something i'll get a uh something to represent new zealand so basically all the cities that i've lived in um That's is awesome. something that i'm collecting on my fingers but like those are really hard spots to tattoo i've had to have these like done touched up because they just they just come off right right absolutely you you've been all over the place yeah i've lived in a few different places <laughs> that's very cool that's awesome well well like i said i'm super excited to see your next tattoos i really appreciate you sharing all those mm. um and and the artwork looks incredible thank you i, yeah. I do want to want to touch on um bigger tattoo pieces um with women because mm -hmm. It is, it is becoming much more mainstream. Um, and especially when you, when you watch things like the CrossFit games and you see that there are a lot of, in, you know, very strong, powerful female role models that are getting super cool, large pieces on themselves. Um, what recommendations or, or ideas or, you know, thoughts would you throw out there to women looking to get super cool pieces like yours? Um, you know, I think for me, the there's been a couple of things happen in my process with getting tattoos. One, I have had to let go of my perfectionist, my inner perfectionist, because and and this is this really is part of what my tattoos remind me to do. You will never be able to quite get the perfect thing that you had envisioned, even if it's extremely close. It will never be perfect. And I think a big part of getting a tattoo is accepting that. And the thing that holds people back from getting tattoos is that in a perfectionist where they're like, oh, well, you know, it, it, I would never be, I would never know what I want. Like, I, I don't know what I would want forever. And it's like, hey, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be something that you're okay with forever. It can be something that signifies a moment in time in your life. And right. if it's not perfect, that's okay because nothing in life is. And that's a really nice reminder of that. So for me, I had to really set aside my perfectionist and, and just let the artists do their job. And that was a really important part of the process for me. Then the other side for me as well has been kind of what I mentioned where people, you know, love the argument of like, well, what about when you're old? Like, how are they going to age? Like, what about when you're, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old and you've got tattoos? It's like, yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> what about it? Right. Yeah. You're going to be old and wrinkly. Like, I don't know how much better of a like, situation that is. <laughs> I'm just going to have ink on my skin. Like, I right. don't think that's a problem. And I think if you're planning today based on, 50 years down the track like that makes no sense that's not even an argument so i think you know do something for how you feel today in this moment and let your tattoo reflect that rather than being something where you think you can outsmart yourself 50 years down the track and be like yeah i'm gonna have something that i like in 50 years that's gonna be the only way i will do it no it's not you change every moment of the day like there will be times when you don't like your tattoos and times when you love them and that's okay i think you tattoo should, and all of mine do, they, they signify a period, a phase, a time in my life that I love looking back on. It's almost like this little memory book that I have, you know, when I look at my star tattoo and I look at like my, my rib cage, it's like, they are representative of moments. They don't have to be symbolic of something that I love forever. I don't think that's realistic. So I think it's okay to get a tattoo, even if you don't, if you're, if, if it's not totally perfect, I think it's okay to get a tattoo that you know, doesn't have to be something that is what you will love in 50 years. And I also think the third thing is that it's okay to get a tattoo because you just like it. I don't think it has to have meaning. So that's kind of what I said to you. A lot of my tattoos, the meaning came afterwards. Yep. And I found that they became representations of who I was at that time or or they connected to other things that were happening in my life at that time. And, and that actually gathered meaning as I've gone through my life um, because of where I was at the time and who I was. So 
tattoos can be just images that you love like especially you know it's like appreciating art like people go and look at art and the meaning is interpreted a million different ways because of someone's perspective and experiences and how they um, project their feelings and emotions about the image and it's the same thing with tattoos everyone is going to interpret a tattoo differently the meaning of that tattoo to you it can be a million different things or it can be one thing or it doesn't have to be anything I think that people put a lot of weight on the meaning of tattoos because it's a forever thing and it's like right. you know what it, it's just skin nothing is sacred it doesn't matter if it's going to be on the skin forever I don't think that we should feel like we are so important that it's not okay to mark our skin for forever it's like no you can do whatever you want to your skin. And if it's an image that you absolutely love, then do it. So what? Like, I right. just, I mean, and, and look, I work in an industry where it is far more accepted than perhaps military or perhaps a corporate office. So I am lucky in that sense where there's no risk of me potentially being impacted in my work environment or family not liking it, you know, like I'm, I'm lucky in that sense and, and privileged as well. So I do recognize that, but I think it's a belief system. And if you believe that you have to like something in 50 years and that it's not okay to have something for forever, it's like, well, <laughs> like, right. okay. that's, that's, that's tough. That's really hard. It's a really hard um, mindset to, to challenge. Right. Absolutely. Well, I love that message. I think that's great. And I, and I love, I love your tattoos and I love the, the strong message I, that you're sending. Um, I think that's, I think that's incredible. So thank you thank so much you. for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, so kind of tie back into fitness. Um, what's what's next for you other than the sanctional hopefully um, in March or May yeah so sanctional uh, actually this one is May normally May? but there is hopefully if the season is back on track there is usually the uh, ACC the Australian CrossFit Championship in around about March um, and then we also have obviously the open in February now which is really really cool and then prior to that there is another event that's going to be put on by a gym in Tasmania and I've never been to Tasmania and that invited me to come out in January um, so yeah that's going to be a, and it's going to be a really cool competition I've put in a couple of like other Australian games athletes and some some just really good local competitors so I think it's going to be a pretty fun event somewhere out you know somewhere different where you know not a lot of people go very often um, so I'm pumped to go and do that competition um and then yeah and then i think once that's here like january we're on a roll because yeah february 18th right the open starts five mm -hmm. weeks that's gonna be nuts and then um the sanctioned events start in australia and then i guess games in august it's, it's kind of strange just having had the games and now it's like you know we're only a couple months out from the open talking about it already yeah i mean i guess that is exciting that's a cool piece it's super exciting <laughs> yeah perfect and and final question because i have to ask what was your favorite event from the games um god i loved atalanta like i think i just think the shock factor of him bringing that workout out and then making it the last event I mean, I don't know if I was super excited watching it. I think other events were probably a little bit more exciting to watch, but I, I just, I loved that, that workout in terms of the programming. I just, I can really appreciate him putting that together and the, the fact that it was a vest workout and the fact that it was at the end of this, the weekend. Like, I just think the challenge and the, the mental fuck with you effect of that, that workout was oh, yeah. awesome. And the name and the story, you know, I just think the whole thing was just so badass. So I, I kind of just love that workout. That's the one that was significant to me. Right. Right. I love it. Well, that's perfect. Uh, well, hell, hey, Kate, that, that's really all I had you. You've been an incredible guest. I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I love your tattoos. I'm excited to see um, your armpit yeah. one. Two weeks, <laughs> right? Two weeks. Yeah. T uh, 10th, 10th of November, 11th of okay. November. So. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And then, and then certainly like, like we mentioned, looking forward to events coming back and follow you on your fitness journey some more. Thank you so much.